What's going on guys? Welcome to part one of this multi-part build log where I show you how to build the ultimate do-it-yourself LED light for planted aquariums. In this first video, I'll talk to you about the parts you're going to need to build the light itself. So let's get right into it. Alright guys, before we go any farther into this video, I do want to give a huge shout out to my sponsors of this project. Number one being RapidLED.com and number two being MakersLED.com. Without them, this project simply would not be possible. MakersLED.com supplied the housing and heat sink for this project. That's going to be this guy here. This is a 48 inch anodized black aluminum housing. Um, it has uh, channels on the back for mounting fans and uh, hanging equipment from the ceiling. And in the middle here where the LEDs themselves go, there's channels where the LEDs slide into the channel for easy, easy mounting. Um, so that's a really fantastic housing. It's the best one I could find for this project and uh, they supplied that for me along with the hanging kit here. So huge shout out to MakersLED.com for, uh, for sponsoring that. That was very nice of them. I also wanted to give a huge shout out to RapidLED.com. They sponsored me with the LEDs and the driver for this build. They, they sent over 60, 6,000K LEDs, 12 green LEDs, 12 red LEDs, and 12 3,000K LEDs. We'll talk more about why I went with those colors in another video. They also sponsored me with this Meanwell HLG 320H C1050B uh, driver. This is the B version, which means it has a dimmable, dimmable lead on it. So you wire in a potentiometer to two, these two leads, and that lets you dim the fixture. That is a huge feature I wanted to have in this light, is being able to dim the light. So huge shout out to rapidled.com and makersled.com. Without them, this project would not be possible. All right, so with that, let's get into the nitty gritty details of what you'll need to be able to build this light. Um, number one, starting with an extension cord. So I went to Home Depot and found a uh, three prong extension cord. This, is, it's, this happens to be an eight foot extension cord. It was like $6 for this one. The reason why you need this extension cord is actually to cut the end off and splice the driver into this extension cord so it plugs into the wall. So that's really the only reason why you need this extension cord is for the plug. Uh, from there, I actually got this, this um, cable. This is four 14 cables, there's four 14 gauge wires in here. This is to go from these two leads here up into the fixture itself. So two leads are for the positive and negative for the LEDs and the other two leads are for the potentiometer like I spoke about earlier. So the potentiometer is gonna be on the fixture itself so I'll be able to dim the fixture standing up while looking at the tank. Um, I could have done just a potentiometer here and have this be in the um, stand, but I wanna be able to, to see the tank while I dim it so it'll help dial it in more easily. You're also going to need heat shrink, a lot of heat shrink. This is heat shrink, heat shrink, heat shrink. You're going to need solder, that potentiometer here I was talking about. This is the actual potentiometer itself. These two leads get uh, wired into those two wires. Um, here's the hanging kit. Uh, you're going to need a soldering iron, soldering gun, a multimeter. You're going to need a thermal compound. This is 16 gauge wire. This wire is actually to wire the individual LEDs to each other. Uh, I'm, I'm wiring this in series, so we'll talk more about why I did that in a later video. But So this is the actual wire that I'm going to be using to wire the LEDs to each other. Um, we also need zip ties, we need a wire stripper, wire cutters. Um, this I don't think I'm going to need fans for this build, but I went ahead and got them anyway because it's better to have them and, have them and not need them than need them and not have them, so I went with them. These are Antec True Quiet Fans. These ones are really cool because they have a dual fan mode in here, high and low, so I can uh, run them really quiet. These ones also have rubber feet on them, so um, it, it, it isolates it from the fixture itself to reduce any kind of vibrations and noise, so I really like these fans. They also happen to be black, so it just worked out really well for that. And I have a 12 volt, 12 volt power supply, just an old cell phone charger, I think. That's what I'm used to power those fans. So uh, I think that kind of wraps up this video. Um, like I said, this is just part one of a multi-part series. I'm not sure how many videos it's going to be yet. Uh, we'll find out more. But I just want to lay, give you a layout of what I need and what you would need to build a light like this yourself. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comment section below. I look forward to hearing back from you. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.